You good? Okay. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for, for bringing this amazing film and being a part of it. Um, for, you know, I just have to know, when you've been up there, oh, a couple of times in your, in mm -hmm. your lifetime already, and it's not, nothing I'll ever experience, but do you still pinch yourself and go, oh my God, I can't believe I get to do this? Oh, yeah. I can't, I can't believe they let me in the, front, in the front gate at the Space Center when I go to work. I, seriously, I drive in here and I, you know, I look around as I'm, so they, they do let me through the gate and so I still can't believe I'm going to work. Yeah, it's, it's uh, I'm going to work as an astronaut, it's still beyond my wildest imagination. Yeah. Yeah, and then when I'm you... Waiting to, I'm ready to wake up from the dream any time now. Yeah. Oh, no, don't wake up too soon, yeah. because, you know, you're doing a good job up there. <laughs> right. but when you do get up there and you, you know, the first, ex you look out and you see these amazing images, I'm sure never the same image twice, but I can't even fathom what is going through your head up there. I can tell you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, for, for me, you know, there's a, a, a few different things kind of go through. There's no words, first of all, to describe it of what you're seeing, particularly for me during a spacewalk. When you're looking through the window of a shell, it's, it's beautiful, but you're, you know, you're in regular clothes and you know, you're looking through the window. When you go out on a spacewalk now, it's kind of like going from the aquarium looking through at the fish to being a scuba diver now. You know, like our friend Howard Hall who does the IMAX movies underwater. You know, going out there and scuba diving and, uh, and, and now you're part of the environment and you can see unencumbered what's, what it looks like and you can see the Earth from the altitude of Hubble, you can see it as a gigantic, let me take the whole field of view, but it looks like a planet. It's got curvature to it from, we're far enough away to see curvature, and it's just just incredible. You still have to do your job so you can't stare at it, but uh, just to share with you some of the thoughts I've had is when, it, when, when looking at the planet, when I really had a time to look was, what went through my mind was, uh, you know, if, if, if you were in heaven, you know, this is how you would see, this would be the view from heaven. This is what we must look like from heaven. And that was replaced by a thought soon after that, which was, no, 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 it's, it's more beautiful than that. This is what heaven must look like. Mm. That's what I, I felt like that I was looking, looking into paradise, that our planet is a very special place uh, that we get to, to live on. So from your perspective then, having seen this film and, and being a part of it and everything, is it as close as we as you know, civilians are going to get to actually feeling that we're up there? Yes, and it's as close as I can get to right now because uh, what it does for me is it, it reminds me of what it, what it looks like. The lighting, for example, it's, you know, the sunlight coming in is so bright and it's very unique. We, we really can't re you know, replicate that anywhere on Earth, but uh, film does. You know, the, just the look and feel of the spacesuits and what they look like, you know, the, the, the way they come across those images and the view of the Earth you know, behind the telescope, for example. Uh, yeah, I, I think, I, I don't see how we could get any closer to it. I, you could try to describe it, we can take photos, we do take our own films as well, but in that format where it's so gigantic you know, and so clear and such high fidelity, it, uh, it comes across as, as clear as, as we can make it. And it, for me, it, it helps elicit the, the memory of, of, of what it was like, because you know, memories do fade no matter what. You relive the experience. You relive the experience, yeah. and it also allows you to share experiences with, uh, with other people. Yeah, oh, just amazing. You know, you can prepare and prepare and prepare for years and years to go yeah. up there. And, uh, but once you're up there, you know, God only knows what's going to happen. That's and right. And you guys, on this, especially on this particular mission, there were a few things. And, Mass, I don't know. I mean, you have the patience of a freaking saint. Because seriously, let's just talk about the screws. Yeah. Whoa. I mean, how? <laughs> I, I don't I, I was getting antsy in the 45 minutes I was watching that film. Like, I couldn't take it. How do you do that? Do you, to get all of them? Yeah. I'm, I'm, pr I'm pretty good at mindless work. I could just, you know, it was, it was 117. Well, first I had to get that handle out of the way, which they show. But I was 117 screws on it that had to come off that plate. John had a, a, a lot, too, on his, you know, the day before on his instrument that he, he re, that he repaired and he and Drew were outside for and, and Mike and I were outside for the, the one you, they talk about with the 117 screws. And uh, you, you really, what you learn is that you really have to pay attention to every little screw. These are little bitty little screws, some of them, these little number four torx head, which are very small screws. So we had a special uh, tool to work with and we had a capture plate to capture all the stuff and no debris could be kicked up inside of the telescope. And he, that was just the screws that had washers behind them. And, it could be a real mess if we weren't paying attention. And any one of those little guys gave us trouble and got stuck, I, you know, would, would create a problem. Like the handrail created a problem, but we were able to pull it off. Yeah. Those little guys would have been, been trouble for us that we had, to, we had to pay. So I really had to pay attention to every single one of them. Now, and the that's handrail what we you have here, I yes, see. Yes, a handrail yeah. right here. Yeah. That's amazing. This is the handrail. This like is this the actual handrail. This was in handrail. space, folks. Yes, this was on the uh, Hubble Space Telescope. And uh, we, uh, we had to remove it to get access to fix the instrument. And uh, 
we, we flew it back home, and here it is. This is in pretty good shape, though, but there was, the, the problem that we had was a bolt that was on the lower right-hand hole of, the, of, the, uh, of this handrail. It had a little, a little uh, uh, clamp-looking thing on top of it, and then it was attached to a standoff because it was used to insert the instrument. This was not launched. The instrument was not launched with Hubble. It was a replacement uh, instrument. So when it was put in, they had these, these handrails, a you know, handrail like this and another one on, on, in the other hand that they put in, and this had to be removed. Uh, in order to get access to the, all those other screws. So the screw was, was, was ripped apart when I pulled, it was broken at the threads, but uh, the handrail's in good shape. So you would you like to hold it? Pretty amazing, yeah. I'd love <laughs> yeah. to. Oh my God, I feel yeah. like I've been in space. That's this bad, is that, so well, cool. Well, that's it, that's Well, thank that's you, it's very nice of you to let me take that for eBay, appreciate it. That's okay, um, <laughs> uh, they'll, they'll catch it before you leave the building. <laughs> I'll give it back to yeah. you after, I'm just gonna hold uh, it. Um, now, it seems to me that obviously, I mean, you growing up with these, you know, six other astronauts mm -hmm. in your in these close yeah. quarters, you got to be friends. You can't not like each other. It's kind of like family. What's the process like? Well, it's kind of like, I really think it's like a family. You know, I mean, we are all friends, but when you get to know each other really well, you know, it's kind of like a family. You know, you get, to, you get to know everything about each other. We get to know each other's kids, each other's parents, what, what, what we like, what we don't like. When so and so, when I'm cranky, you know, they can tell. My friend Drew can say, "Yeah, so I'm in the grocery store a couple of weeks ago," and he goes, "What's the matter? Are you cranky?" I go, "Yeah, I am." He can tell right away when I'm cranky, you know. So we know each other really well, but we still love each other, you know. It's like it's like a family. And bringing Megan into the boys' club, did you, you know, razz her a little bit? Uh, well, yeah, Megan, Megan uh, is is a few years younger than all of us are about the same age. But Megan's quite quite a bit younger than the rest of us. The rest of us. Uh, Knuckleheads, and so she felt like she was going to space with her six older annoying brothers. I think I don't know if annoying is right, but that's what I would describe it for. But no, we're Megan Strip, she was our sister. She was our little sister. Sounds almost. like a lot of fun. Yeah. Now I know you're a dad. You've got um, three yeah. three kids. Two of them. Two two yeah, kids. Two okay. Of them. What do they feel? They think you're My the wife says she has three kids because okay, well, she counts me as a kid. But no, you. I only have. Yeah. I, I hear three. you. I say the same yeah, thing. Yeah. But when you know, they they must think, wow, I have the coolest dad in the world. No, they don't. Who told you that? <laughs> no, they don't. No, it's funny. Whenever I meet, like you know, a, a, a famous person, I think has a cool, you know, a, a cool job, you know, athlete or something. I say, hey, do your kids think what you do is cool? I'm like, nah, they don't care. And that's pretty much, you know, we're just, um, we're just dad. But they, they are very excited about this movie. We got to see the trailer for it in, in a theater, and uh, they didn't know it was coming. I wasn't sure if they were actually going to show it, but they they did show the, this. The rumor was they were showing this trailer uh, in in one of our local theaters before the movie, the regular movie was showing, and they went, you know, they were sitting next to me. And they actually, I couldn't believe they actually agreed to go to the movies with me. You know, it was just me, my son, and my daughter went. Um, my wife took the night off. But, uh, but we were, you know, we were, we were watching this, like, waiting for the movie to come on, and the trailer comes, and they went nuts. And then they saw it was uh, narrated by Leonardo DiCaprio, and they, like, my daughter turns and goes, is he going to say our name? I go, I don't know, maybe, maybe he'll say it. So, so this has actually almost made it cool for, you know, for Dad to be an astronaut. But soon after that, I did something to annoy them, and we came back down. But for a little bit of time, they thought it was pretty cool. The Leo factor. Does Leo, it every Leonardo time. Leonardo DiCaprio, yeah, that, got, got, yeah that, that caught their attention. And plus, they saw us on the big screen. Yeah, so, it's cool. It's exciting. Yeah. Come on, let's yeah. face it. Now, I want to say, I was talking to Megan about this, but, you know, the, the, it always, growing up, when, when I watch, you know, launches from television and everything, the thing that gets me, I think, most emotional is when mm -hmm. you walk onto that tarmac, and just before you're about to walk into the shuttle, and you're yeah. all waving to all of us, and it's like... I get teary thinking about yeah, it now. Yeah. It's got to be Strange. such an emotional experience. It, it, it really is. You know, and I wonder about that. Why is that so emotional? For, for Because it is. You know, you see people watching the show watching there. They show some of the scenes from the stands, and there's a woman, like, you know, fighting back or crying, not even fighting back the tears, but just the look of the people around you. They're not, they're not, they're just watching, you know, and everyone's, and I feel the same way when I see my friends mm -hmm. go. I, I think there's something about it. It's, you know, it's kind of like this is something that everyone thinks, well, most people anyway, think are, 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 is an important thing to do, that we're kind of expanding our, our horizon, seeing what's out there. And the opportunity to be inside of that rocket is just incredible. You know, you're laying there, it's a nice, it was a nice day in Florida. You know, my friend Drew is on one side and John Grunsfeld's on the other side, and we're just kind of looking at each other, waiting, just like we had practice in our simulations. And then you hit zero and you're no longer in a simulation, and it's like uh, some giant beast has grabbed you and is taking you away and you have nothing to say about it. And, uh, it's just a lot of speed and power. I just kept thinking speed and power is what I was feeling. Yeah. It's awesome. Well, this is, uh, this is awesome. And thank you again <laughs> for bringing it to us. It's just amazing. And well, honor and pleasure to talk I to was you. Just, I, was just, uh, I was just doing my job. It's all the folks from IMAX uh, well, that made it. You did it. a great job. It was all fun right. to watch. And unfortunely, I will give this back. Yeah, you need nice to. to we'll be in trouble. <laughs> Thanks. Thank Thanks, you. Bye. That's great. Thank you so much.